What's up YouTube? Got a little weekend rainy day project today. Um, out of a, a few old draw knives I've collected over the years that I'd like to get uh, sharpened and, and up to usable shape. And uh, these are a couple that I've picked up. Um, the handles are good and tight and they're in relatively good condition other than being a little bit rusty and a little bit dull. Um, this one right here looked like it used to have some sort of a chrome plating that has uh, faded over the years, um, but we'll get it cleaned up. And uh, mostly what I'll plan to do is uh, scrub the rust off to uh, just an acceptable level and then polish the bevel and, and sharpen the edge. And uh, I want to try to do this mostly without any sort of power tools just, just because. Um, one of the sharpening techniques I use, um, I, I just use some different sanding blocks that I've made. Um, not much to this, it's just an old planer blade off a wood planer that uh, um, I don't remember if it was a spare blade or a damaged blade, but I, I use it uh, because it's, it's a dead flat piece of steel. It was machined flat and uh, it has this nice edge ground onto it um, that's not sharp and I can, I can really bear down on this, on this block. Uh, this is a piece of leather that's just been cemented to the, uh, the sanding block. Um, I have a few that I've bought that I use for knife making. Uh, this one's a piece of oak with leather on it. This one's uh, another piece of oak or something similar with some more, um, some heavier rubber that just doesn't have a whole lot of give to it. But mostly I'll, I'll be using this leather backed piece of metal here. And uh, I'll use steel wool, a little bit of oil, and scrub these down until the, the rust is in a, at an acceptable level. And then after that, I uh, will clamp it to the edge of this 2x6. You could use the edge of a, of a work table or something along those lines. I use a C-clamp to hold it here, C-clamp to hold it here, and then I'll just um, sand this edge until uh, I get it pretty sharp. I'll probably, probably start with 120 grit or something like that and see where I'm at. I can see a couple of chips in the blade. There's a little chip there, a little one there, and there's enough rust by the edge that there could be some more hiding but uh, not a huge deal. Um, I could have taken these to my grinder and sharpened them, but I, I just wanted to do it, just to do it by hand, just to show you that it could be done. Um, it's not a huge deal. You don't need any special equipment. The bevel is significant enough to where really you're just rubbing this, this flat um, area here. And if you're not reshaping it with a, an abrasive stone and grinding all the edges off, all the sharp contours and everything, then you're basically just staying on an existing plane and sanding it until it's nice and clean. Flip it over and then you'll have your burr developed along this edge. Knock your burr off, strop the, strop the cutting edge and then you're good to go. And uh, I see these in antique stores sometimes where a guy who, who maybe wasn't super comfortable with a grinder took this to his um, 60 grit um, stone on his bench grinder and just raked it across a few times and really just ruin it. Um, sometimes you can kind of bring them back from that, but a lot of times they are just destroyed. Um, so that's not something I want to do. This is uh, kind of like my, my careful sharpening technique, really. This is, uh, this is the way I sharpen things if I really don't want to risk um, reshaping and removing too much material. So uh, you can use this on pretty much any kind of cutting device. So these this basic idea um, will work with knives or or anything else so anyway um, I don't know how much talking I'm gonna do throughout this video but I'm gonna go ahead and get started and uh, we'll, we'll see how it turns out um, I've got this example here which is in pretty good shape other than a little light rust and then I've got this guy who's gonna be a little bit more work it's pretty pretty rusty and uh, pretty rough and it's also got a big chip so I'll, I'll probably alternate between these two um, just kind of as it progresses, but again on this one, it's a it's a nice old draw knife. It's tight. It's not bent. It was well used, but not overly abused, and uh, it's in pretty good shape. So we'll go ahead and, and get started. And uh, thanks for watching. I've done two already this morning. These older draw knives. Uh, again, these were in good shape. They just need to be sharpened up, and I, I got a good deal on them at a flea market. Um, I did a little bit of light sanding on the back just to keep it, just to see how flat it was. And uh, this is the resulting edge. I'm not looking for perfection. I just want a nice, uh, you know, consistent scratch line from the finish. And then uh, mostly I just want it functional. And I think these are gonna work 
pretty well. I might have a, a video of uh, how, how I'm going to use them later on, but uh, it's pouring rain out today, so probably not a, a great day to, to do something like that. But anyway, this was just uh, with these sanding blocks. Um, I think I mostly used just this steel one with the leather back and uh, started at 120 and went up to 600 and then dropped it and that's that's the this is what these should look like when we're finished today I've been using some 3-in-1 oil just because I happen to have it handy and uh, it seems to be pretty good stuff it's a little bit a little bit of a mess but uh, it really works well I've um, got a couple of pieces of steel wool this is a fairly coarse steel wool I don't remember the exact number on it I know my fine steel wool is, is 4 aught, 4 0, 4 0, whatever. But this is, uh, this is the coarser of the two. And you want to be careful not to cut yourself while you do this. Even a, a dull blade can, can get you if you're not careful. And I'm not looking for perfection. I just want to make these usable. They don't have to be fantastic. But, you know, I'd like them to look nice. So where when I grab a hold of them in the future, you know, it's just nice to have a tool that's in good, good working condition. But it's also fun to take one that's been not taken care of, that still has some life left into it, and clean it up and bring it back. But sometimes I'll end up uh, with something that's just a little bit too far gone. And that's part of part of it too. So most of these draw knives are in good shape, but I think about half the ones I've picked up over the years are probably a little bit too far gone. They either need new handles or new fittings or just different things, or that there's not much of the cutting edge left after you've fixed all the chips. So, and you can feel the rust under the steel wool. It has a there's a there's a feedback you get from running the wool across it. A couple of dents I couldn't see before. There's a little dent there, but nothing major. I can see the maker's mark. I couldn't see that before. Rockford, Illinois, USA. Greenlee, Greenlee draw knife. I don't know anything about that company. So that's just a quick scrub down with aggressive steel wool. And then I'll switch to the finer stuff. And this three in one oil um, is helpful for doing this type of work, but it's also Seems to be a pretty decent oil just for keeping your tools lubricated to where they don't they don't rust. So I'm I'm a big fan of the stuff. I've only been using it for a couple of years, but anything I've used it on, I really really liked it. So now I'm going to go ahead and lightly sand the back of this first, just to kind of see where I'm at. And then we'll end up flipping it over and doing the bulk of our work from the other side. Now some draw knives you might find are a little bit too curved or, or bent or whatever to do this. You'll just have to improvise. You may end up having to uh, maybe chalk it up on one side, put some sort of a spacer in there, a couple of pieces of scrap wood. My first draw knife I did um, today had a bit of a a curve to it, so I'm going to do this lightly with 220 and then move up from there. It might be a little bit too aggressive, but we'll see. I'm using Windex as a lubricant. You could use WD 40, you could use whatever you like. I like Windex because it, it dries up and doesn't leave a mess. WD 40, I don't mind to use that in some places, but I don't really want to spray it all over everything in my workbench, so we'll do this for now.
Now most of my sanding strokes are going to be long and straight, but I can see kind of a dip in the back, or at least it seems like there's a dip, so I may do some angled sanding. I'm not going crazy. This is just a tool I need to use. I don't, I'm not looking for it to be perfect. This is already, I'm already making too much work of it just doing it this way. I don't want to make it an all day project. But you certainly could if you get into hand sanding it to a really high level. So there's 220. Um, go ahead and wipe that off. And I think I'll do a quick pass in 320. I can see a bit of a some dings right there where this thing has been hit with a hammer. I never really understand some of the different ways that tools can be abused by people. I think the worst is old um, bench vices. The horrible things that they have to do for people. They just get abused in every which way. I think the most common is to see them with holes just drilled all through them where people just used them to hold something at the drill press and they just pass through the working whatever they're working on and drill holes all through the vise. I have one that's just been drilled a hundred a hundred times. Just has it's had holes holes drilled into it a hundred times and it looks awful but it works it still works fine. So it's just unfortunate. I, I like old tools, they have a lot of character. So if I can use an old tool to do a job over a new one I will. Plus they're a lot cheaper in a lot of situations. Okay, so here's where we're at. I can see a chip right there, chip right there, but they're relatively shallow, so hopefully it won't take too long. I could sand all the way out to the edges. I don't think I'm going to bother, but uh, it could be done. It wouldn't be the worst idea. But mostly this video is about sharpening, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna move on to that part. And this is a this is how I sharpen knives that I I make on occasion, especially if uh, I'm not feeling if I'm out of the groove on sharpening things on the grinder. I feel like I can get a really consistent result using this method. It doesn't take that much more time, and it's it's worth the consistency. So there we are. That's not, doesn't feel too unstable. So I'm going to start with the 220 because it's handy. I can still see the lines and the, the edge bevel from when it was machine ground at the factory. So that's kind of neat. So it, maybe this thing wasn't abused for too long. Maybe somebody borrowed it and just gave it a few good whacks <laughs> and then didn't use it again. Because it could be a lot worse. And you, I could do all this from one side, but I can. it seems like I can get to the end of the blade and finish the end of it better if I switch sides. The side closest to me, it seems kind of awkward. So... You can kind of hear a bit of a zipping sound of going over those machine lines. And after I've kind of, well, I think I'm going to have to move down because I've got these chips. And with 220 grit, I'm going to be doing this all day long. So I'm going to go ahead and jump down to 120 real quick. So to knock those little chips out of the cutting edge, I'm going to use 120. And that'll do it. A little more quickly. And uh, change the paper pretty frequently. I just roll the paper back a little bit further every time. And rip off the old paper. You can, it cuts the first 10 strokes or so pretty effectively. But after that, it's just diminishing returns. You'll end up, if you try to make one little scrap of sandpaper last too long, you're going to do four times the work. So use it while it cuts and move on. And then sanding like this isn't such a, such a chore. 
I actually enjoy it a lot of the times. Mostly because of the results, not really because I like sitting here and sanding, but I know what I'm going to get in the end because it's pretty predictable. And I can see the chips are getting shallower. I can feel them getting cut into with the sandpaper. And you could do this until you move up through the grits up to 2,000, 2,500 and have a mirror edge you wanted. But on a working tool that, I don't know if there's a lot of benefit to that. I don't know if it actually cuts any better or worse at that level. I feel like a you want a bit of a toothier cutting edge and the higher the grit the less of that you'll have. Switch my paper out. Thought I'd give you a quick close up of the cutting edge. It'll show up. There's a chip here. And the other one might be nearly gone. Yeah, I can't even see it now. But yeah. There's the chip. And I'm going to stay on my lowest grit until that chip is gone. Let's see if I can focus. You're going to form a burr pretty quickly on something like this and it'll be sharp but until those chips are sanded out it's just uh, no, you can't do much about it but you can you can hear the burr. You, I can feel it. You can see it starting to curl up but uh, this will work pretty good. Here's my fingernail on it and that's along the full length except where that chip's going to be. And I want that gone because that'll translate to what I'm what I'm working on. So anyway, um, I'll stay on the 120 for probably maybe another strip of paper, and then we'll move up. I'm going to go up through 600 grit for sure. There's the maker's mark. Uh, I'll do this up through 600 grit. Do a couple passes on the strop, and then call it done. I nearly got it on that pass right there. You can really hear the paper cutting the first few first few passes and it drops off pretty quick. This is Rhino wet sandpaper that I use in knife making. It's wet or dry and it's good stuff. I think that pretty much got the chip out. Let's see. Uh, I see just a little hint of it. Enough to where I can tell where it was. But it's probably it's probably at a level where I wouldn't even feel it while I'm working with it, so. I'm doing this pass right here mostly just to see if I can even out my scratches. Because I'd, I'd prefer they don't look terrible, but they don't have to be perfect. So after you get, get it sanded where you like it, move to some fresh paper, make a few even passes in one direction, and you'll have some decent looking scratch lines. I can feel that burr all the way along. You may even see it, we'll see. There's my cutting edge. And the chips are gone. And hopefully that shows up. So we'll move on to higher grits. And see where this where this ends up. Now you could do this with stones if you wanted to. Diamond stones are nice because they don't dish out, but they can be pricey. Um, you could do this with water stones. You could inverse the process and just 
clamp your stone down and move your tool across it. But there's a lot more, um, a lot steeper learning curve to doing it that way, I would imagine. But it, you might have a better result that way if you got good at it. This technique, I feel like anybody could do and come out with a decent cutting edge. It's also fairly inexpensive unless you do it a thousand times. Then you've got a lot of money in sandpaper. But if you're just doing a few tools here and there and you don't know much about sharpening, this is a great way to, to learn. And here's 320. Now if I had a draw knife that had a a massive chip in it. I'd probably start by if I had to grind it, I would grind it. But if I thought I could sand it out, I'd probably start with a steel backed hand sanding tool of some kind. Because the steel backing would allow you to cut more aggressively. The leather is, has a little bit of give to it, but then it's the leather is steel backed, so it's pretty pretty strong. But uh you can do some serious work with a piece of steel and sandpaper as far as shaping something that's been really damaged. Now this is 400 grit. I'm using um, a little bit thicker rubber sanding block. The rubber's pretty hard. But this won't cut as deep. This is more superficial. Just trying to get the sanding lines to look decent. You could probably use a file to start setting your initial edge to. I probably should, I may end up doing that on the other draw knife because it's in pretty rough shape. But uh, on this one, it, it really just wasn't necessary to go that hard. Those little dents it had just weren't very deep. And now moving up to the 600. After the 600 grit, I'll flip it over, knock the burr off, and then just drop the bevel. So I went ahead and finished the 600 grit, flipped the blade over, and now I'm just going to knock the burr off the edge. I can feel it going down. So I'm going to knock off the bulk of it, but then the last of it will probably come off between stropping and then using it. So here it is, looking pretty good. My strop, I usually, I don't use it as a handheld tool like this very often, but it can be used this way. And this is just some 10 or 12 ounce leather glued to a piece of wood, and I've loaded it with green buffing compound, and I'm just rubbing it along the cutting edge. If you do this often, you probably get used to uh, having the strop down and just doing your blade against it. But I can hold it still and do it my way, and it works for me. So, so there it is. And it's in pretty good cutting condition now. So, there you go. So here is the finished blade looks pretty good as far as my standards go and you can't tell that it was ever misused it doesn't have to be perfect this thing's been hit with a hammer anyway so there it is you can take this to as high up a finish as you want and really get a, a mirror edge if that's what you're after and get the blade as sharp as you want it um, so the kind of the sky's the limit as far as what you want to do with it but uh, this is just one quick example I thought I'd show um, I don't think I've seen a video quite like it so hopefully uh, hopefully you find it useful and uh, 
Thanks for watching.